stayed wrong, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't. Well, welcome, everyone. We are here for another very special edition of the GG Millions. It is season 2023. We are in episode 32, and my man Mario Mosbach is here in the building. He's on a heater. We got him. I don't know how we got him today. He's earning everywhere, winning Tritons live. He's winning GG Millions, and he's with us today. Mario, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Chef. Um, I've been watching the stream like I think every week, and uh, so it's it's cool to be on this time. I, I love it. I, I I was the other day when it was maybe three weeks ago or four weeks ago. You won the tournament, right? And it was I was you were I was messing with you. And I think I said you were a goalkeeper. I don't know how I thought of that. My apologies. Professional soccer player played forward and uh, didn't mean that, you know, goalies, nothing against goalies, but no disrespect. And, and I, we got it right now. You're a uh, former professional soccer player, played forward, and now you're winning all the tournaments. So let's, uh, we'll have a good day today. We'll talk some soccer. We'll talk some football. We'll talk, we'll talk poker. And we're going to see some of the best in the world do it, of course, as a stacked final table. As you look at the leaderboard, look at this, David Yan, he is up next. He will be the guest on the GG Millions next week. So nice to see the man with the most earnings, leading the way on this GG ranking. He will be your guest next week. Today, though, 1,310,000 in the prize pool and some of the biggest names, the brightest stars in the game, playing for 284,000. And can't wait to talk to you about the players. I'm sure you battle with them regularly. I know you play the, this particular tournament and, of course, play the highest stakes live as well. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on some of these, these absolute crushers as we will take a look at the final table lineup and who is in the lead. Of course, I mean, it's just got to be, right? Adamo, when he goes deep in big tournaments, he seems to have the chip lead. That's his style, and he is doing that today. 83 big blinds, and Justin Bonomo, no slouch himself. I believe either the number one or two, right? He's tied with Bring Kenny Batten all the time for the number one all-time earner in live tournaments. And then, again, Amy uh, Mia Barra, there's Jao Vieira. There's some other very well-experienced players here, Dimitar Donchev, and, of course, we will be not forgetting David Peters. How can you? He's He also gets it done live and online. So very exciting final table. Mario, who stands out for you today? Anyone you've played the most with that you just are impressed with? I, I, I always I feel funny asking these because I feel like in some ways, if you compete with them, you don't want to give them too much credit, right? Or like give them, you know, make them feel a certain way. But give me any anecdotes you can on the players here. I, I've, I mean, today we got really lucky. We have great setup, um, Michael. I mean, especially the dynamic between Michael and Justin. I'm very curious to see. I know they battled a ton online. I battled a ton live. Um, and I'm, I was really curious to see how they go first and second into the tournament. Um, they will battle it out. Um, the, I think the player the most, uh, I, I'm very happy to have Michael on the um, final table today. He's, uh, he's actually, it's actually quite funny because I, I only have Michael experienced as a uh, online player and I never inter, uh, never met him live. So if, if these situations where you don't uh, know someone live uh, and yeah. he's very aggressive online, um, so I thought like he's maybe an aggressive person or like, you know, and then we met, I meet him live and he's like the sweetest man I've, I've, uh, you could ever meet. So he's, he's, he's such a great guy. Um, so easy to root for very fun to watch. So I'm really excited for Michael too. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it is funny when you battle with people that you don't get to, you don't meet or know. And then when you do meet them, it is, it is kind of interesting when you, you feel like you already know them when you've played so much together. We did see Adamo open 7-10 off, as you would expect, with the chip lead and going for wide opens on the button. And then it looks like Matthew w put a 3-bet in with the queen 10 off. Are you surprised there with ICM or just he knows how wide Adamo is and just figures it's the spot he's going to have to take with some marginal hands? Um, no, I'm not surprised. My Matthew is a very, uh, very good player, pedals every, um, all the high stakes online, and Michael will be wide there. He definitely... Um, he's known for having loose ranges. He's known for putting a lot of pressure on the players as well. So not surprised to see um, Matthew Schriebert here. And now Dimitar is like already um, at risk against Justin. Got a good flop. Yeah, bottom we're going to call Ace-Queen. Still could be in the lead. Of course, has that valuable heart. He is behind, needs to improve. Gets a, gets a first part of that puzzle. He does hit a heart, needs a heart. Ace or Queen on the river. And it is a... Man, this guy, I, I, again, great player, just seems to get whatever. Look, to the king and ten of hearts are gone, no problem. Queen comes oh. and a heart just in case he missed 
that it was a queen, and that is a knockout right there. Give me a little bit of thoughts on Justin Bonomo. I mean, this guy, obviously, results speak for themselves. What, what are your thoughts on him as a player? I mean, he's a legend. He played the highest stakes for so long. He's battling live and online. Um, great to see him still playing the 10Ks online. And um, and now, now it's kind of a curious situation because now it flipped. Now Justin is in the lead um, over Michael. And I would, I'm curious to see how Michael will adjust, will adjust to to that uh, situation. Shao with a reshuffle. Yeah. Zhao, also another super experienced player. How much have you battled with, with Zhao? Um, we battled a lot of code names in Monaco this time, so he's a great guy. Very fun to be with. Um, very easy to root for, um, and uh, I hope he does well today as well. Um, very tough to play on a, on a like very intense live player. That's what I um, would call him. This very, you, you feel like he looks right into your soul when he stares at you. Yeah, he's a, he's one of those guys that has a ton of success. Hope to get him on. He's been on my the podcast as well. I want to have you on, Mario? Love to to get more in depth other than just poker sort of analysis. Final table. We'll be we'll be chatting today, and of course, Yao has been on the podcast. Love to have him on as a guest for the GG Millions. It is fun when you see the guys that compete and play at the highest level, right? And then have them get to kind of commentate like yourself that battles with these players. So that'll hopefully get to have the Brazilian on. And again, Brazil and Austria always representing. The final table. I don't see the Austrian flag. I think uh, no, it wasn't Dan Chav either. So this might be the first time or the only the second time I don't see an Austrian flag representing the final table. A lot of Canadian flags today having a big big day for uh, North America there. And Brazil is represented with Zhao. As let, let's do let's do this this draft though. Let's get a dinner. Let's get the audience involved for the fifty or hundred dollar oh. ticket giveaway. Why don't we do a red or black? You choose the next flop. Uh, black. Let's do it black. Black. Okay, let's. Uh, we'll sweat red as an audience. We'll be on whatever players I draft. One hundred dollars will be fifty for Mario's, and of course the hands up. We will have that that jackpot progressive that is available in the YouTube chat, and we will also have a Twitter giveaway pinned on my my Twitter, which should go out very soon with a fifty dollars cash giveaway to retweet. Let everyone know we're live as we see David open the Queen Five Suda. How wide when you're when you're betting into the uh, Damo here in the small blind? And you see some other similar stacks. Like this is this is definitely scary. You know that Adamo is going to be pretty aggressive here. Is, is are you surprised that he opens that? And this is we're seeing the illustration: King three off, taking the spot. And you just have like a decent playable hand, but you you just got to expect he's going to be super wide. I mean, is it just is that just standard, or or is that are you surprised um, that he opens there? Queen five. I mean, the suited high and low cards they uh, work pretty well in these scenarios. Um, David has to open queen five here. Uh, Michael, like he takes the spots very aggressive. So maybe you want to leave out the the, the bottom opens, um, or you forward a little more. You can go both ways, um, depending if you want to battle against him or if you want to rather take a tighter range and start with that. Um, but yeah, you have to uh, open the queen five uh, suited, and then Michael a little bit out of line uh, with king three off suit. Um, but yeah, that that's, uh, makes him very, very uncomfortable to play with. And he studied the spots a lot. So he really knows what he's doing. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, again, very accomplished players here. This is always fun to see when these guys are so familiar with themselves, especially in this format. Generally, the entries, it, it's not, you know, thousands of entries, right? 100, 200 players. So there's a lot of familiarity between them and, and going to be some exploitative adjustments as well. I got to ask you about Game of Gold because I know Fedor, yeah. you know Fedor well. You have some friends on the show. And what, what are your thoughts? I mean, are you caught up? Have you seen all the episodes so far? I watched every single episode. And the thing is, even my girlfriend watches it. Like, uh, it's just a very entertaining show, even if you don't really are into poker you just kind of like understand the game a little bit um fun dynamic i'm very positively surprised by uh, how fun the, uh, the 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 show is to watch how about you yeah i've seen i did watch the first four and I, i'm embarrassed i'm not fully caught up listen i got two little kids two boys i was just traveling and it's it's i, I I'm, I'm looking forward to binge watching the next four so i've seen i've seen the first part i saw the sit and goes and with the team get eliminated Probably, I mean, arguably 
the strongest team, right? Just based on poker ability that did get knocked out, which is kind of cool. It shows you the variance in life and poker and, and how that works. And, and again, no guarantee, but I, I'm loving it. I think it's amazing. Nikita Luther was just my most recent guest on the podcast. So just got that out. I talked to her, you know, she couldn't reveal this was like, while wow, it was still like episode two, I think shooting. So I didn't, you know, get any spoilers, but um, very interesting and, and love it. Love what they're doing. And I think obviously it's going to hopefully be more seasons um, on, on, on the, uh, on the show as we see a cooler here with this stack size i mean this is uh tough right icm you got jacks is there any way to get away from this or are you just kind of you're, you're just top of your range situations like the middle pairs lose quite a bit of value because like he's now wrapping ace king and uh, queens plus um but like these high stakes players have enough bluffs where jacks just is a four bit champ there's not really anything you can do about it um it sucks, but in these spots you just have to uh, you have to get it in. And is this our first flop? It's red. It's a red flop. Was this what our we... first one, or did we miss one? It is. A... I think I think you 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 go first. You go first. I get I, I get first. I can either choose first or second and third. Then if that is the first flop, as we do lose another player, we're down to seven already. Quick start here today. I will take. Uh... I'm actually going to take second and third. I'll let you go first. Okay, um, I will go with my friend Michael. Adamo. Okay, I get. I will take. Uh, yeah, I guess I will, obviously I'll take Bonamo and our friend here. I'm so I don't pronounce the name. It's a little bit small on the screen. It looks like. I'll be the. I'll take the Mexican flag. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that Minko? Yeah, Vladimir Minko. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'll get those two and then you go. And now we alternate all the way down. Okay. I I forgot about Chao. She he will I will take Chao Viera. Um he will he will take it down today. Wow. All right. I'll tell you, I mean, I'm a sucker for chips. Ami Bear, <laughs> very accomplished player in his own right. Uh, it doesn't even really get mentioned in this lineup, but he has definitely been around and one of the world-class players of the world. So I'm happy with that. And I believe does that leave you? Is it Matthew, the last one? Is that right? David or Matthew? Oh, yeah. David. Okay. I will go with David. All right. I got Matthew. I like his Queen 10 bluff to start, showing he's getting after it, willing to take spots and understands the situation. So, all right, we got ourselves a sweat. If one of my players win a $100 GG tournament ticket, if one of Mario's players win $50 GG cash ticket, that is what is up for grabs. And, of course, the tweet is out on my Twitter, Jeff Gross Poker. Mario, you're, well, you're eligible for that. Fifty dollars, please retweet if you if you can if you use. I think you're you're more active on Instagram or social. Where can people follow you? Um, yeah, I'm more more active on Instagram. I am I'm a Twitter ghost. I I read everything, but I don't really post. Perfect. So, all right, we'll take your pick. Follow along with Mario, please. You can see his socials. He's uh, he is a man that travels the world, plays plays the highest stakes, and is on a true heater. Do you, do you ever get when you start winning live? When you start hitting these these big 10k, the most prestigious event, the GG Million? Do you start do you start thinking about that Fedor run and and like the you know some of the friends of yours that have had these like these unbelievable runs? Does that creep in your head that the heater is happening and wear the same underwear? Do you have any rituals? Any any superstitions? It's crazy because like two months, like I've, like I'm the same player like two months ago, but somehow get perceived different now since I had a um, a bit of success in the last weeks. Um, no, obviously I was uh, I I, I was uh, I, I noticed Fedor's run in 2016. I was very very well there. He, he we talked a lot about it back then, um, and I mean Fedor's run 2016. There was some legendary stuff. Um, Maybe I don't know. I just we'll see where it goes. Um, don't really have too many expectations. I was very happy with how it went the last uh, months and weeks, and uh, yeah, just take it from here. Yeah, it's it, it it is. You know, Dan Coleman. He's a he's a very good friend of mine. He had a similar. I'd say there's like three or four players that have ever had runs you know the bonomo run the dan coleman run the fedor run you can mix in bring kinney and maybe you know a few others that have had these like epic epic tears daniel negranu's had a few in his career right where he just gets hot and just feels untouchable so it's uh 
it is, it is there's something about it though the confidence in yourself but also others as you said you're perceived differently maybe you notice it live they're folding their big blind more they're they're kind of like staying away from you so i, I do think there is something to be said that as we see matthew with uh, a king although king four for yeah. bonomo going to be interesting how he goes and attacks this spot although what he loses to a six now it's actually a kind of yeah Weird. And Vladimir with the limp under the gang, that's interesting that he chooses to limp instead of min race preflop against the other big stack. This is this is a pretty crazy river, right? Like there's literally no bad river in the deck. And this is like one where now Bonimo, can he even raise here? Or based on does he I guess he just doesn't think does he have many sixes in his range limping the small blind? Maybe not, right? So I, I don't know. Do you think he finds a raise here? Um, it's close. I mean, Matthew has a lot of sixes as well. Um, and the question, uh, Bonham has to ask himself is even if he raises how many King X does Matthew call off? And like, I mean, there's some four X that he doesn't lead to the turn as well. So he does win against those. So, um, just like how we perceive the spots in theory, it's like always a race. Um, in practice, Matthew would need to call off some King X and I'm curious to see what he decides to do. Because also Justin can use this spot to bluff quite a bit um, for a small price. So, um, yeah, very, very tough decision for Matthew here. I, I like the raise a lot. Actually, it also like the flush draws miss, right? Diamonds and spades. He doesn't have, he, you know, he just, it just like you said, how many sixes, a six axes is he going to lead? And then could he get paid by a king? So this is the difference high level. I think you will see a lot of players just call, even though, I guess it's close, right? It is a lot of hand, and you do beat even the other fours, which is nice. So you, I think too much. When you would raise here, though, you personally in the spot, right? In the spot, because it's also an easy raise fold. Like if Matthew shoves, just tough to find the lead bl shove bluffs. So and then he will get, he will find enough folds. Um, uh, he will find enough calls probably um, to make the raise worth it. It's it's. Yeah, and the other, other thing you have to think about, like how many times does Vladimir call behind if you just call the river? Um, that it is not really that much that likely um, that he would check back a king and then calls over calls on the river. Um, that is another consideration if you have a player behind. Michael, now I'm I, curious, how far does he go? 10 suited, nice. Yes, 10, ten uh 10 6 suited going for an open there. I just put my guess in for the hands up as well to jackpot progress. It's pinned in the YouTube chat, Mario, if you get a chance to guess your hand that you think will win today. So we're eligible. It can happen. It's it's hard to do, but I said nine of spades, nine of diamonds. That is my official guess. If you want to partake in that, you got to click the hands up link in the YouTube chat, and then you type in the comments for the Reddit and the GG community there. You can type in, and if, it, if that happens, you win the progressive jackpot. It goes up every week and hit once only. And I think I've done about 50 shows, so um, maybe a little more. So good luck out there. And, uh, you know, good luck. If you want to make your, you, you have a guess, give me your hand. You can say it out loud. You can type it into if you want um, to be a part of the jackpot. 10, 8 in hearts. 10, 8 in hearts is Mario's guess. Let us know your guess, but remember, you must submit, hit the link and go there and actually submit that if that is your, if you want to be eligible. It'd be, it'd be pretty tilting to get it right that and then not actually submit it and then it doesn't count. But good luck to everyone there. Multiple giveaways, as always, here on the GG Millions. And again, a treat that Mario, appreciate him taking the time as Yao goes for the King Jack off. And two Titans gonna battle here, Michael with the Queen 10 off. Let's see if he simply calls, makes sense. Seven, eight, three, no play. It's hard to make a pair, Mario, and, and hold them, isn't it? It's just amazing how hard it actually is. So like, when you make a hand, and you have, like, have a full house or something, it's just like, it's so hard. Like this is just showing you again here, two decent hands, four Broadway cards. No one even has a, a, real, a legitimate draw. And look at Adamo just come out leading with the sort of range advantage, I guess, on the on this board, if you will. You like this lead? Is this, this something Adamo incorporates into his game a lot? Um. I'm curious where he sees the leads from. He probably gives himself an eight and seven x advantage. The over pairs are clearly in Shao's favor. Uh, favor. Um, question is how far Shao goes. Probably king eight suited will go. Um, so I really like the race um, here, Michael. Yeah, I, I'm honestly not sure um, if if leading here is the um, 
is something to to implement in the in the game michael probably has um looked into it so it's always interesting to see and i think for everybody at home like watching these and like seeing a situation like that is always like okay if michael thinks that's a good situation to lead like that's definitely something i want to uh, look into and um um study and go deep in this but like where does he come from um what does it uh what does trigger this uh this uh, lead so it's amazing to have these players and watch the cards uh cards up well he's now gonna he make a misstep here as he puts in a huge three bet out of position and he is gonna run into the weapons the absolute the absolute hand rank one tier one and it is actually kind of kind of tilting because he puts in 350 and, and he's he's actually against one of the only hands where his equity is just so shattered right like even against kings or ace king it starts getting close ish right to, with that how much money he's put in the side money but he would be in basically the worst shape you could have in the worst situation i mean he needs around 22 percent and probably gets that it against maybe checks plus ace queen is king um i think he has wow wow close yeah he faulted he faulted Wow, he actually had aces. Big pick up there for Matthew, though, and he is going to... Timing so important, right? In poker, so much about, like, when you three-bet, the wake-ups, and, and and also just even that lead there. You know, if he happens to have 9-10 on that 7-8 board, he's obviously, you know, he's going to gonna probably stuff it back in. So what do you think the considerations are there for... for Yao? So Jao just represents exactly, as you said, the overpairs. He's just saying, look, I have more overpairs. I'm going to re-raise you there, and then... You know what? What is would, would Michael play the same with a nine ten or a six nine? There, you think he's just going to lead on that board with his his open endeds, most likely. Open ended pairs. Um, he will have um, no equity leads, like hands that don't really want to check call. Um, that you can now lead and fold out some from some of the older cards. And Shao is in a similar spot. Like obviously, this is his his calls, um, his over cards with back to flush draw, his ace highs. It maybe it's ace 10, ace 9 that are easy calls, and then you have like king check that you don't really want to call, and now you can put them into your uh, raising category as a bluff to just fold out some of his equity. Um, yeah, I'm, it's actually curious for me as well. I did not, not expect to have a leading range on uh, ace, 8, 7, 3 rainbow, so I'm just, just a spot that uh, we can know, and I will um, look into later. It's a thing like as a chick covering stack, he will have more um he uh Shao has way more risk premium so it's more expensive for him to get a lot of chips in the middle and for michael it's less expensive as the covering stack so he will just force in these situations um to get the money in the pot to push out a lot of Shao's equity and that's like kind of how chip lead against mid stack scenarios often work makes makes a lot of sense Makes a lot of sense and, and interesting. Yeah, again, these players are so familiar with each other's games as we mm -hmm. see the ace eight off going to get Jaw at the bottom of range just to fold. Uh, we are already seven handed here. Play to a winner. Again, this is from Sunday 10K buy in. This is the marquee event in online poker weekly. And we do play the final table Tuesdays, 145 Eastern, with very special guests as we have today, Mario. Mosbach, if I've pronounced the last name, I, I know I don't have it exactly right, but you guys can, you get the idea. But say it, say it, say it correctly, Mario. Uh, Mario Mosbach. 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 Yeah. All right, we're it's, close. Uh, Amanda, my fiance, she's, uh, she kind of got a hang of it now. Um, but Where it's is just, she from? She's American. So okay. nice. in English, it's tough to pronounce, I think. Um. And Shao with the check call of the King Seven suited against the eyes of Ramamichai. He's such a fun guy to play on the table with. Um Amichai, by the way. He's he's a talker. Um, very fun, very loose, um, loose talking. It's really, really nice to have him on the tables. I think I'm played with him in the Bahamas last year, so probably be there again. Well, he's got himself a wheel ace that he did put the price up checking the temperature Yao does get a pretty nice flop with king seven of diamonds although the turn does sort of make things a little more complicated although in these spots the ranges are pretty you know it's pretty wide that the the blind on blind and king seven you know you would think on with the 10 jack kind of that eight nine or jack x or these type of hands aren't really raising generally out of the big blind so it's kind of like the weakest hands and then some of the premiums checks back in the turn probably going to feel 
okay, although it is a scary board. Uh, curious if he goes for like some small that sort of blocker or wants to just check and decide. But I think you know he should feel he might he has the best hand as played. I would I would imagine a lot. Yeah, let's see him. Now it's interesting if Amateur decides to check it down. It's a very good board for Xiao's range. Um, but Amateur still beats King 9, King Queen. And I think those two hands go into showdown as well. So I think, therefore, not bluffing. Ace 5 is good there. Even though it's very little showdown, and potentially if Xiao bluffs his King 9, almost none. Um, he still has all the other non ace high, uh, non pair hands that he can bluff with, and he needs to be careful to not do it too much. Interesting spot from Xiao how he will perceive the sixes here. He can do both call or three bet. Yeah, something check. to notice these guys really they do they're they're very in tune to the chip leaders, right? Understanding how wide chip leaders are opening, and you are going to force some more folds frequently. And then David though. With the suited queen 10, closing the action, not a lot of fold equity, pretty premium hand though for his stack size and situation. So uh, also curious here with David, what he's going to do. What, what's your instinct say? Close. I mean, Justin's range is very wide and Shao's range um, quite condensed. There's the pocket pairs, the suited drop broadways, the offset combos he will three bet a bit more. Um, the weaker suited combos he will, like king 10, king 9. Suited, so he will three bet as well. So his calls, I'm, I, I like the call. I like the chess call from David and shove a little bit stronger here. Um, it's generally like very different than in chip EV scenarios where the caller against the chip leader is a condensed and strong range. And if you shove just 12 big blinds, a lot of those hands um, will call off as well, even though he probably would have got it through with his queen 10 suit in this spot. Yeah, so the eight peels off does pick up some backdoor straight draw equity, Bonomo, all of a sudden. And Queen 10 suited, kind of a tricky one, though, too, right? You're you're not really Queen sure. Nine. Sure, Zhao could have the low pairs. Bonomo's opening wide. This is a snare you have, but you're also just behind King 10 suited somehow or any any weak ace, and now Bonomo's going to start betting. And if you are Peters, this is tough. It's a very tough spot. I mean, Queen also blocks some of his bluffs, like the Queen 9, the Queen check. So I'm not surprised to see the 10 fold here. Um, very good picker, very aware from Justin um, that now is his range becomes the strongest again. Um, after he probably checks quite a bit on the flop, um, also with some, a with some A6. So he will have enough value to bluff a, a lot here as well. And it's so interesting to see how far. Um, um, Justin and Michael and Vladimir go with, with the opens. Ace nine here is a, a clear open. The, the offshoot A6 perform really well. Um, even a, even though you don't really want to play a big pot with Michael, but that's just uh, sometimes you got to do it. Yeah, there's some interesting hands. Love taking notes. These are, these are hands, you know, I, I don't do a ton of not doing like deep dive solver work. I do some some work on my game and then talk with players. There's so many interesting hands here. I think this is a great way to review. Watch some of the highest highest stakes players in the world that you know are doing great things and they're very in tune to what's happening. And then when you see something that looks kind of different than you think makes sense, go ahead and, and make a note. Show show the hand to some friends. Talk about it. Discuss and look at ways you can break down and understand why they're doing it in this given spot. And again, it's everything's it's not the same so every spot's different icm's different situations are different so you got to be careful not oh, okay i saw this guy do this with this hand and this is what is right to do so it, it is important to be very alert and really look at all the reasons why things are happening in a given hand but it, it's fun i gotta say i love i love watching this i love doing doing uh, the commentary here and uh, mario if you would maybe give us a look into how do you study do you do you review do you watch certain live uh, final tables do you enjoy certain poker studying other than just like let's say g general solver work or peer groups give me give us a little look into how you study poker and think about the game it's actually I give a little a secret here we we go through the the 10k final table quite often um like we have a, a weekly routine where um we rotate um someone watches the final table notes 
all the interesting hands and then we we run them we look for the preflop solves um post flop with icm is a little bit tricky so it's and final table game is mostly about preflop um so you want to be very sound um so all, all the interesting spots um and like it's amazing like here we have seven of the best players in the world battling for a lot of money in end game scenarios and every situation that someone does something interesting you just note down and you look at it yourself and then when the situation comes up on any of your final tables, you can be like, hey, I've seen this. Um, I know this concept. I can use this. And so um, great tool um, to review, to to watch, and actually take the time. OK, what are these people, what are these players um, doing in the situations? Yeah, 10 blinds here, 40K big blinds. You can see our upper left telling you, ace nine, Peter's thinking what options shove, fold, or min raise maybe i guess probably he off 10 blinds in this spot is yeah he does he does basically shove and, and explain to me why the 252 leaving himself back is that is that just strictly for there could be an all-in all-in is that is that the reasoning but he doesn't want to it's basically that like once he 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 shoves and he gets two or more people behind him all in the ranges from the from the players behind become so strong that he performs uh Poorly. so he then gets back the decision okay now he can decide to call a fold um and sometimes it's this case where the ranges behind become so strong that it actually becomes a fold so it's basically just allowing yourself a free roll in the case of people behind you waking up with super nutted ranges happens very rarely also sometimes puts you in very awkward spots if the people behind just call and suddenly you have to play post flop um but generally that's something um you you do don't do it when you have a bad internet connection that is very important so you don't time out i think that's uh, happened uh, to all of us at some point um but uh yeah definitely something in theory you want to add to your game um and but if you're uncomfortable with it, it it's not a huge difference like it makes very little thing um and rather don't do it if you could make a mistake later on um if like a big bunch of calls and then you're uncomfortable in this but i think it's it's a small difference and if you've started it a bit then um you can add it to your game now yes. david with min raise with pocket sevens oh that's a tough spot for david i'm now really curious how he how he proceeds it's basically vladimir saying he's not folding anymore and um now david has to think about does he have enough equity against this rebetting range i'm guessing he will fold the pairs just don't perform that well in these scenarios <clears throat> yeah nice nice i mean we've seen minko be a bit i don't want to say tight but seems like he's just sort of you know hovering around now he takes takes a spot which doesn't necessarily have to raise here right i mean against the stack it makes it's a strong hand but yeah putting david in a really tough spot i'm curious what vladimir's uh chichi name before was because he's he's I, I don't recognize his his uh his chichi name now but definitely um he's he's been around the blocks a lot um definitely um someone that has played on chichi quite a bit maybe you can you know, see that oh yeah for david it's a really tough spot Aye, aye, aye. I think you will end up folding. Wow. wow. Goes for it. Snap call, as you would imagine, wasn't the three by fold. King, queen suited. Pure flip here as a safe flop for Dave. He's got the clubs back door. The ace scary card doesn't hit, though. Looking for a king or queen or else David Peters will announce himself back into the game. Oh. And he's done that. Big moment for everyone involved. Pay jumps on the line. Plus one of the world's elite players is now back healthy in the game 25 lines big moment there nice nice you said you're a little surprised right that he decided to go with it there but i guess you know his risk premium was was the lowest right i mean he was the shortest stack didn't have a lot to lose yeah and it's just against the call gets against free bidding range he figured that he has enough equity um and maybe 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 he even has some fold equity like if vladimir decides to three bets something like an offset king or an offset ace that he wants to three bet fold um could potentially be the case as well and if that's the case then sevens um 
start uh, to become very profitable. That that is something David had to figure out in this moment and decided to go for it. Now, now it's time. Michael with the suited ace. I love to see it. Yeah. You know, and these, these spots might seem like, okay, you have a7 suited and just move on next hand. But in Michael's, he's opening 10-7 off. He's opening all kinds of wild hands. So when he gets an actual like a7 suited to him, that is a, he's got a real hand. This is not one of his bottom range hands. He is in the, the upper echelon of his, his opening. So he does flat and he is in a pretty precarious position as bottom all hits top, top, and has got him uh, locked up here. And, you know, he knows there are some light three bets from bottom all, some suited yeah. broadways or other broadways that it could be, you know, he's got the backdoor spades, but ultimately does decide to cut his, adventure off there and that is a good discipline he was in, in a world of hurt there got out of the way uh bonomo extends his lead 3.6 million bonomo is the table captain and adamo basically tied for second so no one really short right now all of a sudden with losing players early we see 25 blinds as your short stack yeah yeah michael has to be a bit careful there like if he opens a bit wider um then his gap uh, of raising and folding um, could become very uh, big if he starts to fold out quite a few, starts to fold more against three, but with his good hands like h7 suited. So that's kind of his approach. He will open a bit wider and defend against uh, three bets also a bit wider than um, other people would in these ICM scenarios, which makes him very tough to play against. Um, and um, yeah, very successful approach over his career. Four Rick. deuce, six, eight. Mm -hmm. And both players, we said hard to make a pair. Both players do make a pair. Damo, better position, but David Peters in the lead with the middle pair versus bottom pair. And Adamo, pretty straightforward. Got a little piece of the board, going to bet. See what's going on. David, certainly not going to fold. Yeah. I would assume the now go check, check to the river. And David has a decision whether or not he wants to block or check. Maybe a little bit thin here on the nine parts, um, but I wouldn't mind it. Against a weaker six or a four, or maybe some king high. All right, Let's see the check back as going to be a win for David, who is, again, sort of on a, he's on the up, up and up. He was very short. Now he's healthy, 30 blinds all of a sudden back in the game. Seems to be the great players do that, right? They, they're short, and then they just find themselves right back in the thick of it. And now he is a very much alive as a sort of, uh, we see that, that grouping with Matthew, Zhao, Ami, and David. And he is, he's on a little, little heater, got, got things going, picking up pots. Put himself Why back in the game. Can't count him out. He will come back. It's always also for the other players. You like don't want to openly say it, but like you kind of root against the good players when they are all in short. Like for Shao and the other players who are on the same stack level, um, they would definitely wouldn't have minded if David got out here in seventh. Yeah. And no, for sure. And now he's back. It's always like that, though, right? You want to see the pay jumps. You want to see the. You want to see, especially when it's a good player that goes out. Sort of like a double, double, double nice thing to have happen. As both players here, seven four off. Although we saw Justin last time in this scenario, they both. It's almost the same flop. It was like King King Jack or King Jack Jack, and Bonomo had an air ball hand. He just bet small and took down. Here though, he doesn't bet. He just decides maybe too many Probably. cards right a 10 clubs any jack queen king ace the, the player's not going to fold so maybe he just decides that this particular board does doesn't bode well to try to win so he's just gonna yeah yeah for, for the time, but like he he arrives a lot with a lot of air balls and then you have to think about which hands you want to bet and which ones you check and here on this flash draw board like if you would have seven four with a club he would have probably decided to bet and the ones without a club or a heart he decides to check so just make a little differentiation um which has to choose from to get a good like guideline of um getting your frequencies right which is very important if you play against um good players like vladimir in the big blind um i can't really read but uh thomas s said vladimir's chichi name was in the chat um 
can you read that chef G or... no I, I can't oh you're talking about the youtube yeah on the bottom right in the stream from what we see uh let me see i'm trying to get my what's the youtube oh i i had a issue with someone found found out uh vladimir's former gg nickname um very interesting spot here on the button from him with the ace for suit it looks a little bit out of line but these hands perform really well um as three bets because matthew doesn't really have much of a calling range so it's basically just about the blocker game the four doesn't really block any of matthew's opens um and the ace does con block his continue hand so got a very quick fold from king queen um here so very well um executed from vladimir here yeah, I want to say hello to everyone in the audience. Let us know where you're watching from in the world. I know Mario will be joining in the Bahamas for the WSOP. Pretty exciting. Some some great bracelet events. Huge guarantees down there. I'll be joining as well. So, And if any of you here watching are there, please say hello to myself. I'm sure Mario would welcome you to say hi as well. And uh, yeah, going to be a fun series. That is, there's some, I'm curious on the guarantees because there's some, there is a bit of a, Overlap at the end and another series, but the, of course, who the WSOP? What better to win a bracelet in paradise in the Bahamas? Uh, it, it's oh, yeah. it's awesome. I'm 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 super excited about this and can't wait to go down there. So that that's going to be fun. And and have you? When's the last time you were in the Bahamas? You played some of these events in the, in the past there. Um, if I think it was the PSBC in was it this year? I think so. Yeah, it was this February or January. Um, the last time, but now it's back in the Atlanta. So I'm very the first time it. Like ten years ago, it was the it was the Bahamas was always the Atlantis, and they looked at it from TV. So now it's the first time that's actually back there. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Now David folds the sevens. That's interesting on on the button. Doesn't want to tangle with the chip leader. And Michael, I I think he will join. Yep, goes for the call. So pretty got a making for some interesting turns some spades some some uh, of course cards that can connect and both players be interested in with a very real draw and also a middle pair so 292 in the middle bottom decides to check back still in the lead interesting card does bring a pair for adamo now mm -hmm. now that now it's very crucial pots for Justin if he can get away with um one or two more pots suddenly everything flipped and now he's the starts to become the runaway chip leader which is a very profitable situation for him oh both make the straight Michael will win no I'm curious to see will he what do you think Jeff do you think he will bet himself or goes for a check call I would think you'd go for a big bet here. He likes over betting. He likes big bets. I mean, I guess the thing is, how many eights does Bonomo have? I guess as chip leader, he does have some. But as play, there's probably not a lot. So I think he's just thinking about targeting maybe some two pairs here or maybe, you know, gets lucky. I, I, I'm curious. He did go 200 in there and does get paid. What do you, what do you think about the sizing there? What are, what's going through his head when he does make that bet? What is he, what is he targeting particularly? I could have quite a bit of King X in his range as well. Um, Justin has some, maybe some King, um, King 10, um, Ace King, not really relevant anymore because it would mostly bet the turn. Um, sizing wise, you don't want to go too big in the situations, but Michael also likes to do, um, to just say fuck it and we, we play for 2x pot, yeah, which I wouldn't mind. But you need, I think it's a very well sizing way. He will not only get called by 8x or king x, he will also get by one pair type of hands. Like if Michael has pocket fives here, what is he gonna do? Or pocket deuces or like ace five suited, um. He will also need to bluff though, so Justin will have some some calls as well. Mm -hmm. Matthew with the three bit shove. Yeah, pretty good spot. I mean, real hands there, suited broadways for Zhao and Michael, but an a timely ace king does get to squeeze. The chat, the chat all helped together. Uh, Geometry Millie, that was his uh, Vladimir's former tg screen name thanks guys from yeah. miguel Shine. i think it's a, a one of the poker code members helped us out i, re I recognize his name 
For which player is that? Um, for Vladimir Minko, that's his former okay. uh, name. Because uh, I, 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 I think I played with him quite a bit, uh, but now he f has the real name. Well, he has taken a yep. spot from his learnings. Goes with the eight deuce off and look at sticky bonimo here queen three suited these are fun when the players hang on and you know i guess maybe not quite enough back door here right if it was a club the ace of clubs or something that's the eight deuce off best chance is going to be take a shot here it's just sort of what you accomplish with this is you get to represent the the high board when you ra uh, raise with air and target one of these sort of middling or suited type hands but he does check back are you surprised with a check back in this board in his hand Mm, I don't. I don't mind it. You you kind of want to think about what what hands uh, you want to put in the in the bluff flop line. Sometimes like check back and bluff turn line um, just shows uh, also very good awareness of him of, of his range that he has some some pocket tens, some pocket queens, um, some ten four offsuit that he doesn't necessarily want to bet. So he just chooses this hand to bluff uh, on later streets or just hits the river uh, in this case. Either way, he probably would have won the pot. So just shows that he's not just blindly betting and also like making it tough to maneuver. But because like if he bets all his bluffs on the flop, then his delayed bluffs on turn and river. Ooh, wow. This is this is dicey. What a what a setup. And this is, I think you have David, right? And I have Bonimo. <laughs> Let's go, David. And this is going to shift power a bit, potentially, of course. No guarantee, but he does have the suits covered as well. Actually, a good spot for Michael because now he's then back in tight chip lead, which allows him to go a little wider again. Um, curious how David goes. Just, I would assume he clicks it to 450, 400, and then Justin just goes for it. Yeah, I mean, this is the one that you say poker is their luck, is their skill. These are one of those ones that things just sort of happen. And Bonomo now with, uh, you know, seven-handed button getting kings, you just feel pretty confident, right? There's not much to be scared of. But uh, that he is in that particular spot, and he is going to find out quickly that this is... You would have loved the poker chat. Uh, the click, it's just like... Uh... <laughs> Now he gets it in. There you see. Kings to aces. Suits are covered. No, going to be no sweat there on a possible straight. Even needs a, a king and a king only. Oh, not going to get it. And Bonomo is down below 2 million. And David Peters on quite a spin, right? He was 7-7 seven to seven not long ago. And now he is your actual chip leader, it looks like, or tied, basically. I mean, it's, a, it's like a three-way tie. With Minko slightly ahead of Adamo and David and Adamo are basically tied and Bonimo is still very healthy as he is going to try to brush that off. Probably going right for this rebet again with the ace-9 suited. Against Matthew folding out some ace-10, ace check opens, some Broadway opens. And you see he goes for a very small sizing that's just 4.5, um, allowing him to do it with a bit more uh, of a wider range and just like putting Matthew in a tough spot. Um, because generally you don't really want to call a lot of three bets in the spot where you have a lot of premium risk premium uh, post flop. Um, and sevens might be a hand that falls into the category that, that actually wants to call as well. So curious to see if Matthew decides to do something here. Does go call and the East nine suit are going to miss, but does have a kind of wrapped situation with the back doors, right? For sort of right in the middle. It looks like a, it looks like a good flop for Ace nine suit. If you're going to three bet, you also do beat some Broadway hands that would just call and curious now how bottom will proceed. He's going to come out betting. And this is the thing about those pairs, right? Oh, I get a good price pre-flop at like eight and a half to one to flop a set. You don't flop a set. And then it's like, I was no set, no bet. You're no set, no continue. Now, what do you do? It's like, all right, I call one, maybe I'm ahead, but like now I'm peeling for a seven exactly, or what am I looking for? I beat the ace, king, ace, queens. Now you get even a more, kind of one of the better turn cards you could get, right? That doesn't hit the seven. I mean, you do have a heart in your hand. Your opponent doesn't necessarily, you know, it's unlikely. He's got suited hearts. So you start thinking, okay, what about like ace, queen, ace, king? 
off suit. Maybe they have a heart, but overall, I mean, it's hard to get away at this point. And Bonomo does turn the gut shot. You think he continues here? No, check. You, you like that? I, I like it because Matthew does have more suited combos. He has the ace check, ace queen in hearts. Um, maybe even some king queen, king check in hearts that he doesn't forward champ. Um, and the tens and eights. I would say it's on the turn, Matthew Matthew's range becomes uh, the favorite. Who could think about leading? So could be interesting. Um, and Justin just doesn't have good suits because he doesn't want to block the back to flush draw on the turn um, after c-betting because that's some of the combos that Matthew could... And he goes check, check. Matthew could fold out on the turn. So I'm not surprised for Justin to just give it up. Nice pot. Matthew hung in there with the sevens called flop back. Got a pretty favorable run out and he is going to hold on for that pot and things do get condensed again Zhao, now your short stack but still hovering with a healthy stack so no one no one critically short right now again some great players today big treat on the lineup as we see some pairs and the suited ace for Adamo. yeah this is uh david with the pocket fives probably will go for a call and then we have michael what do you think he does, Jeff? You've seen a lot of Michael, right? He's he's been on this final table so much. Yeah, I, I would think I would think he right? calls. I mean, I guess he's one of the players you could see squeezing with the ace, but I, I like the suited ace. I just I don't know. He's closing the action. It's it is it plays well. They're deep against Minko. I, I mean, I want to say call, but I also see him making it like four fifty or something or five hundred. You know, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, five hundred. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I guess and when it's close, he 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 chooses violence, right? Anytime it's like a, you have an option, but I mean, how, are you are you are you sure he's doing that, or do you think he's going to call what percent of the time in this spot? Um, no, I, I think he he can do both. He 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 just makes it depending on situations, like how how he perceives that other players will react. Um, and I think it's a fine combo to three bet as well. Ace to suit that performs really well post flop. Um, Block some of the continues and Minko just goes for the oh that is very interesting just goes for the click induce um, very very wide wide uh, against most players but against Michael that could just three bet five bet ace two suited I I see I I see how this could be a good play and obviously Vladimir has studied these spots and um, prepared for the final tables and. Now he opens the trap for Michael to, to follow through. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, he folded. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, could have gone a couple different ways, but Adamo will relinquish 500K. Still 2.1 million, and <laughs> Minko with the 5.8 suited. He's seen the chip leader role, how, how that is to operate. He's going to go for an open as Matthew has Jack 10 off in the big blind. And, you know, uh, what? 30, 32 blinds, 33 blinds, closing the action, Jack 10. Oh, kind of kind of hard to play, but he's going to go ahead and, wow, re-raise here. Mario, didn't see that one. I mean, it shows very good awareness of both. Vladimir opens now wider, becoming the um, kind of far chip leader. Um, only David, uh, that's still close to him, opening to a shorter stack. So he goes uh, quite a bit wider. And Matthew shows very good awareness of this switch to to be able to three bet then um, against this very wide opening range. Um, well ex executed from both players. Yeah, Matthew's impressed me today. I mean, you said very familiar, very capable player, but right away with the queen ten off out of the small blind versus Damo's button open when he had ten seven. But just showing that. He knows there's you got to take some spots. You can't just have super premiums and, and attack these guys that are that are opening wide and also going to get some extra credit. Although players are probably familiar with his willingness to put pressure and take marginal spots. So a lot of interesting dynamics and a couple of real hands here as well. Now Michael with the with the I think it's a both is fine. I think calling is fine, but how I think he perceives his spots, he will go a little bit wider and. Three bet call is queen suited here. Or just Excuse calls. Me for one sec. Justin with the overcall. 
now going three way to the flop. Um, definitely um, a decent board from David's opening range, um, but a very good board for Michael's flatting range. So he could better check both options are fine. Hello in the chat. Radio, how was Cup Vienna? Um, very nice. Cup Vienna was a great experience. A lot of the Venus poker players um, met up, kind of felt like a home game. And then we all went to the club till four in the morning after uh, day one. And it was fun to see so many players um, show up and get to interact with. So definitely uh, can recommend it a lot to go there uh, next year. Um, David with a tough decision. I think, I think he, yeah, I think fold is good. Um, defending the the pairs over the nine and just folding eights. And now we're on a short break. Oh no, no, we just skipped. Sorry, right, just at his <laughs> restaurant. I'm just getting over a cold. I apologize, everyone at home. A little congested and and not a hundred percent. But again, happy to be here. Wouldn't want to miss it. Can't Mario and I have been planning. We had to last week. We 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 moved it and then. This yes, week I, I wasn't feeling great, but I'm I'm happy to be here and get to chat. This is definitely a treat. And again, people can follow along with Mario. Check him out on socials and check out his results. Uh, how how was that to win a live Triton event recently? Give me a, give me that feeling to win a live ma major event, seven figure score. That was amazing. Um, especially like starting out with the two. Like at this time, it just started with the biggest event, which was the 200k, um, yeah. which topped my biggest um, buy in uh, to date and. I was very excited to play it. It's not that easy to get a seat. You uh, have to get invited. Um, so I was lucky enough to have a friend um, who I met in, in Cyprus this year to to partner up, up with me. And yeah, and I was really excited to play it and a fantastic event. I mean, for the, for the, I remember this moment with like, with like two tables left and it was 13 pay and the min cash was 500k. Um, and I was with, uh, with Haralabos, uh, Elton, Danny Tang, Dan Smith, and it was like right at the bubble, and it was just a, such a pleasure to play. It was uh, really fun. Everybody was enjoying. Everybody was talking, and it felt yeah. like a home game, even though it was by far the biggest stage that I've ever played on. Um, and it just like it was such a surreal uh, experience, and um, I got really lucky that I ran very hot in these two weeks. Um, and uh, finishing second in the 200k, and then three days later winning the 40k um just a crazy experience yeah that's i mean it is as good as it gets to, to win i mean triton does such an amazing job and so many great people there it's 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 it is a lot of fun there's really nothing like that to, to take down especially seven figure score to go with the trophy a lot of these players here battle in those tritons and have won themselves tournaments and it is nice you know seconds are cool and all that but getting the actual the actual trophy getting the actual win and, and doing there's something magical about that in poker as i know here today the players are looking for a lot of these players have won tournaments adamo actually one of the more impressive resumes on the gg millions he has in season one won three times season two won twice and season three won so he has six gg million titles that is i believe I want to say second to yan or uh, he's he's up there maybe i forget who is I, 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 he, it's one of the most there's one of the nicholas Ost that maybe is one six as well it's 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 a lot that's a lot of wins to have bonobo's also won a title matthew i believe has won one title in season two and one in season three as well and bonomo yes season one has won one but it, it shows you it's hard right jao Vieira has not won one it looks like which i'm surprised about i've seen him a lot seven final tables in season one five in season two but it just goes to show you it's not easy right to actually get the win it's you gotta you gotta finish it out and you gotta run well and you put yourself in a good position get there as much as you can and, and hope for the best but today i know he's got his eye on the prize although he is at eight hundred thousand right now one of the, the shortest stack as david and bonomo tango yeah and david this you can see that now he's a chip leader. Now he's covering uh, Justin's open. Therefore, he defends a little bit wider. If the roles were re reversed and Justin would have covered David, he um, he would have folded the six four because post flop he would have uh, been at a disadvantage. And now that flipped. So that's also something to always look for. These little things um, when the stack distribution changes, like how does the defending range changes? Um, now Justin. 
Ori goes for check, yeah. And it's just, yeah, Jeff, it's it's tough to win this, these events. I mean, everybody here, even if, uh, like, you, you're you familiar with all the big names, um, and then Vladimir Minkum, with, which I uh, haven't heard, um, not yet on the live scene, um, and then he's playing really good today, uh, just before he, he shoved the King-6 offsuit for 20 big blinds. Yeah. Um, from the small blind, uh, very shows just awareness that these combos get used and just shows that he's... Um, he started a lot and he's very good, very tough to play. And then at the end, it comes down to a lot of luck. Um, once you get to this kind of level, um, these players are all uh, really, really tough to play against. Yeah, I'm going to defend the queen five for Adamo as tens, you know, got to feel pretty good. Again, short, the risk premium, the lowest, shortest stack. Ace comes, but how many aces does a big blind have here? Defending not a ton and Queen Five just gonna get out of the way, not make a meal of it, as Ja will be back to right about a million at chips, which puts him just about twenty blinds. Ace Jack suited. Very playable hand. Ja also differentiating before he raised two point four X into Michael's big blind giving him a little bit of a worse price, making it probably like open raising a little bit tighter and opening a little bit bigger. Um, and now against a similar stack, also a middling stack uh, with Matthew in the big blind, he just min raises um, because he decides that Matthew will, will defend a little bit tighter than Michael anyway. Good board for Michael. Mike. Yeah, yeah, Deuces tough, tough, uh, tough hand to play. Gonna come with the lead on the six seven seven with Deuces. Interesting. Have to play against these. These are the spots where these are not easy to find. Like these leads and uh, final table scenarios, very tough to play. Um, but it basically comes down to Matthew having more seven x Shao having the overpass, but barely any seven x. So he will check back a bit. So Matthew just wants to take the initiative with a part of his range um, and decides Deuces is a, is a part that wants to do that and adds them to the lead. Now both options are interesting, either bet or check. Oh. Doesn't have a spade in his hand. There's spades out there. He is going to put Jao in a position where if he calls this SPR is, you know, less than one significantly. So it would be 837 in the pot. Jao would have 583 going to the river if he does call here. Although calling in this particular board with this hand doesn't really feel like kind of kind of a make or break time. It's, it's a weird one. He's actually, yeah, he's in really bad shape to deuces even. So it shows you, you know, what he's thinking, though. There are a bunch of random bluffs there, right? There is bluffs, a lot of bluffs, too, that yeah, Matthew could have. Back. Matthew does get up to 2 million there. Very nice hand. Yeah, he, he did not want to fold. You could feel that through the screen. He's like, I don't really buy it. But he, with his hand, he just cannot do anything else. Um, very well played by Matthew. Um, again, a spot that I will... Um, note and a look into later just very interesting how they perceive this uh, leading spots as the covering stack in icm scenarios um very difficult to maneuver and very hard to play correctly um but uh, two times we've seen it uh well executed david probably with a bit of a wider open yeah Now we see Michael before he was the ace queen suited that he didn't want to sweep but have to stack it off. So in the ace queen officer becomes a rather um good candidate for both. I would I would think he three bets him three bets it a, a bit more in this scenario, um, but decides to go for the call. Yeah, ace. Queen, this to me, I, Mario. I, I, this is like a question I ask everyone. Ace Queen, is this the hardest hand to play? Is there tricks with Ace Queen? I mean, what, what are? Give me some. Talk me through Ace Queen. It just feels like a difficult hand to maneuver. You're always. I talk about this for years. 
feels like when you're ahead, it doesn't work out. When you're behind, you're like, you get smoked. It's hard to win big pots. It feels like with ace queen, you just kind of, uh, you know, the ace comes, do you get ace jack to put a lot of money in? If you have ace queen and you flop the queen, they have kings. Or if you, you know, you, you have an ace flops and they have ace king. Talk me, talk me about ace queen. Give me a, give me a, a poem. Give me I mean, a, give me a, give me your, your feelings on ace queen and how to play it. It's a, it's a great hand. I, I actually really happy every time. Uh, most of the time I get it. Um, I think where it comes from is right at the, at the edge. Like, I think uh, sometimes that's it's being the mistake where you get it in a bit too loose. Let's say you scream at it a little bit more and then the ranges become too tight. And then let's say in this scenario, if Michael would have three bet and then David shoves, these are the spots where it becomes tricky. So um, that's why ace queen suited becomes more of a flat in this situation. Uh, not strong enough really to stack off because ace king is such a big part. Um, and then you can just have it as a three bet fold because there's good attributes. You can play well post flop if he calls. Um, you block a lot of the four bets, so it's actually a pretty decent uh, three bet fold. Um, it becomes tricky if you go a little bit too wide, too deep um, pre flop, um, and if you overvalue it. So you kind of have to make the adjustment a little bit prior and be like, aware, well, okay, is this now a three bet fold or a three bet call? And if it's not clear, you can just call the open as well. So I think there is um, where the big mistakes happen where um, you three bet it and then suddenly you're against a two tight of a range and you still stack off. Um, that's why I, I can totally see how this becomes tricky to play. Um, but I think the solution is to just think about it a little bit earlier in the game tree um, and then make the adjustments there. Interesting spot now with Vladimir against David's uh, open. Curious how he perceives it. He has been quite aggressive with three bets. Um, covers him by just a bit, and I wouldn't mind the three bet, but I probably think he doesn't want to three bet too much, and therefore king check off seems a bit, a little bit too wide um, in theory, but one combo he can choose from, and he does it and takes down the pot. Lines are up 30k, 60k, 75 anti, 7500 anti per player. Not big blind anti. Interesting to note 30k, 60k, and ace jack, queen king. Two very powerful hands based on their positions, button versus big blind. And Ami with a shorter stack there, just still decides it's too much hand and gonna get snapped off by Minko. And he is gonna be ahead, but this is pretty tight. Big pot, big equity here. Ace and a queen both come. Backdoor diamonds would be advantage to. On me, it doesn't come, and now he is going to need to hit a pretty specific river, and it's not going to be as it will be a knockout. Another Canadian goes down, a lot of representation today, losing a few, though, and it is a pickup for Minko, who is having himself a day. 4.6 million stack, and he is off to the races in a nice position. David Peters, 3 million. We got 2 million for Matthew and Adamo, and then Bonamo and Yao below a million, so down to six going relatively quickly thank you for joining us just over an hour into the show again with daylight savings we are at 145 eastern weekly and we are going to play to a winner this is from sunday tournament pauses final table to a winner mario what was that how many weeks ago did you win this it must have been a month now a little over a month i mean you were traveling and we took a few weeks maybe yeah, six it weeks so it yeah. was a, a little bit of, like yeah just right about a month ago so five weeks ago okay um, Tuesday before we went to Monaco, so yeah, it was it was twenty fourth of October or something. Um, do, you, do you feel yeah. there should be trophies for online tournaments, or is it just would be yes. too much? Yes, a hundred percent. I think uh, GG should send out like the the live one. I uh, I actually texted Aki about it because uh, there is the the live GG Millions one. The the web slim one twice and santosh one it just looks amazing and uh i would love to have one like that's just because it's such a prestigious tournament yeah um it's so tough to win you always play against the very best players of the world um and it's just uh i would love to have online trophies i think that's if i could recommend one thing because it also makes it really nice for the players okay he won that event um and that means something not just the, the money part um, so definitely something I would uh, I would support and be happy about. I'm gonna second that. Patrick Leonard made this this comment a while ago, and like I look, we all played soccer. Patrick played growing up. I played. I have a trophy case still to this day in my parents' house. All my trophies as a kid. 
Yeah. And yeah. And it, and it's just, there's something cool about it. Like, listen, I, I get it. You draw the line participation trophies, seconds, thirds, ribbons, all that. But as a poker player, you know, I look, I gotta, I gotta run it up Reno big trophy. It looks like I won the world cup, you know, something <laughs> back there. And it's, it, to me, it was like a $500 PLO tournament, but that, that feeling, that emotion about it. And it's like, it's fun. And it's like, it's like, you say, okay, so you're telling me that it's 300 grand, 264, 284,000 the first, like, yeah, put put together that you know Full Tilt used to do this with the shirts. They were given shirts every time you knocked out one of their pros. That cost money. They got to mail it. It was a big cost, but like you know, for for yeah, maybe cut draw the line. Yes, 10k buy-in online. You win that event. That should be. Uh, you should get a trophy. I don't know. Is it is it every tournament? Probably not. It, but I also had the idea. What about this? You get you opt in if you want trophies, right? They have it for the different events, and then. Big pot there for Adamo. Going to go ahead and take it down with Ace Queen. Nice pot. So this would be my idea. You opt in, and then maybe twice a year, they do like they mail it out. So if you Mario have played, you won the, this tournament. Maybe there's like ten other eligible tournaments where a trophy get that. They like bundle your trophies at this place, right? They have them saved, and then even once a year, who cares? Once a year, they send it out the first week of January for the year. You won eight tournaments. Here's your eight trophies. I don't know. I think that would make sense instead of always doing it. And that way it would be efficient. It would be cool. And it would be, you know, who wouldn't love to have like in your, your thing. And they don't have to be, they don't have to be elaborate. They don't have to be the APT. They have amazing trophies that I just played there in, in uh, Seoul in Korea, just outside of uh, Seoul. And, and they're, they're these magical lion trophies. You don't need to have the best trophies in the world, but like just something, something to show uh -huh. you were the best in the world for that time. That, I, I'm, I'm going to make, we're gonna clip this. We gotta get this out. We got we gotta get it out. And, and, and we gotta get this going, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this. I think GG, I think I think it would actually separate. I think, things. You have I to think people them. would like they would be they would want to play part. instead. What do you got there? You got something some trophy there? Yeah, because I, I won the the scoop main event like two years ago or something, and my friends didn't know that they uh that they sent out trophies, so they made me one. See? that's amazing that is yeah. amazing and you know what i talked about this i think i asked patrick or i asked someone what do you think about making trophies because listen i'm i mean is it corny is it wrong i i love that that is that needs to be highlighted and and, and pushed around the poker world oh you have great friends I, i'm glad it wasn't you that did it your friends did it and that's even that's cooler that's cooler than anything yeah. right? that's amazing so nice also they spend a lot of like time like detailing my friend uh, roland and um just found a company that does him, show them exactly how it works um, or like how they want to want to have it. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it was very sweet of them. And it just means a lot. Like I can always look up and remember this moment. So and for an event like this, everybody would love it. I mean, the, 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 the first time this time that I want to try an event, I have it in my living room. Um, just it's just yeah, just means a lot. Um, I think I I, I would love it and just make it for like some tournament like GG Masters um, just for the big like if you want to build a brand around the tournament add a trophy um, obviously it costs a little bit of money but also not too crazy if you find a company that uh, manufactures them and sends them out and take it even take it uh, um, out of the price pool or whatever I don't mind um, but the trophy there would be would be so sweet. Yeah, all right. We're 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 gonna make a movement, Mario. The Mario movement on on trophies. Uh, it is it is it is it, it's 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 gotta happen. I think we gotta we gotta get behind that. I think that'll be something very fun that maybe GG can take the initiative there. I like it. Start with the millions, with because I I love the one like the the one that Santosh won the super millions because it's like this kind of like gold. It just has like super it's like i was like damn i wish i wondered would have wanted life because that's uh looks cool as hell um yeah. and yeah, yeah be that's yeah. i mean they could they yeah so they have it they 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 have that right they have the ability they, they've made trophies somewhere they could they could definitely put that in and that, that'll go in the yeah. suggestion box and, and we'll get that we'll get that rolling um this uh this is this is a, this, I want to ask the audience here live on the YouTube chat. What do you guys think? One should get trophies for, for winning tournaments online Two, maybe three. No, I'm curious. Like, I guess it, it, there's a cutoff. And, and again, though, where do you draw the line, Mario? Cause the 10 K, not everyone's playing 10 Ks, but, but you know, where do you draw it and how many different versions is it during series only some like branded events, guarantees, certain guarantee amount. What do you think? How would you de 
where would you draw the line? I would I would think about from like a provider perspective. I would think about like what brands uh, of tournaments I want to, uh, to build up. Like there is even the Chichi Masters twenty five dollar tournament can be yeah. like a little smaller one, and then you have the one K or the, the main Chichi Masters um, just have a cool I don't know Chichi Masters looking uh, trophy and just a smaller one for the like the daily one or the big one for the um, for the big one. And I I, I would just start off with the with the flagship events like 1k gg masters 150 gg masters um super millions um and then maybe global millions and then you have like four or five every week and then you just have have a company that does it and sends them out to the players um and then think about like which ones you want to build on um uh later on and you can add them and it's just like this is your trophy events um kind of like that because uh, i've always been loving like back back day then full tilt when they had like the f tops and mini of tops and like send out t-shirts for a final table or i think like a watch or something i i, I made a mini f tops event some while ago under yeah. my mom's name when i was like 12 or 13 and she got sent uh, an, a, a watch right before black friday um and i was wow. super excited i still have it somewhere um so yeah th this is just like that's that means a lot and i would love to, uh and i always I love that you. i love it i love it all right well let's uh we'll we'll, we'll put that in elki definitely can make make stuff happen too well, well maybe we can we can make a little signed uh petition or you know sign the thing for people to, to do that would be that would be a way to do it right go to go to like the poker stops and have people sign a, a thing about it and, and and i think we can get some traction behind it david peter's going to work by the way quietly 2.7 million and bonomo who got kings to aces before now gets him again in the big blind gonna get a welcome site from winko with the a6 off and minko at five million a strong five million basically double second for adamo and peters effectively is in a great position as you mentioned some poker code was involved and knows his stuff knows his way around a poker table and showing that and bottom all here do you ever do you like a flat here do you like it a little tricky oh, versus a chip he, no. he's just deciding if he wants to three bit normal in which is an option um because minko will have quite a bit of uh, a loose range which which I actually like to have a three bet folding range here as well if he has a hand like king five off you king six off suit um ace two off suit um and yeah gets it through uh and uh vladimir is playing really well takes over the chip lead putting on some pressure now finally loser opens and yeah on a for i mean on a very very tough uh six left table so yeah i'm very impressed goes check check Yeah, bottom all. Got to like the five. King, five, king, two diamonds, and a good start for bottom all. Going to come up betting. Three, nine suited, no back doors. Can't be loving this spot. Sometimes people get a little fancy in these these positions, right? But no, not not there. Not with that. Not in that spot. Does give it up. Bottom all going to pick it up as Adamo again. Back to 2.5 million and a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of firepower in this remaining six players here. This is a... It's an all-star lineup. It's very rare where all six are like well known or or you know household names that are in the tournament. Of course, a prestigious tournament, but this is this is a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of create creative players here who are very familiar with themselves. And even Minko, you mentioned, who is maybe not a household name, but is someone who is very well studied and knows the way around the poker table. And just looking too at his results in here, he has not played a ton of. GG millions. Oh, he does have three final tables and eleven caches in season twenty twenty three. So it has been playing a fair amount here. And very well, like Justin here finds that his his hand is not quite strong enough to Oh, that's oh, that might open the door. I love the click back from Matthew, um, allowing Justin to five bet shove. Um because Justin realizes preflop he is not strong enough to shove and he doesn't really want to have a flooding range. So ace for suited is actually quite a good candidate to three bet fold. Um, and then ace four is, ah, it's just one of the hands that if you want to have a bluffing range, then you just five bet shove. Okay. He goes for the call. Very interesting. I, 
I think in theory he would choose this combo more as a as a shove, but he against a super super small price he doesn't mind calling. I mean, I mean he only needed like fifteen percent equity or something. Now it goes check check, or ah uh, no it goes check maybe he steps. Very interesting. Check, check, and ace king in the lead, but starts, you know, starts getting interesting here with the very important pot for, for Matthew, for both players, but Matthew in particular, he has the best hand. He has ace king, and he has the lead right now if he wants to to bet or not. And now, man, this is starting to get interesting because Bonomo with the ace four suited doesn't bet flop, doesn't, doesn't, likely have the best hand almost certainly king queen right but king queen would probably be attacking yeah, and, and yeah ace king now has a winner if he can get to the showdown that's a tough spot for for justin i'm curious if he decides to bluff the river or check it down i mean he could have some showdown value against some king x4 bets but very rarely that also might bluff now the river. Um, yeah, very tough spot for Justin now. And I'm curious. I don't think he gets ace-king to fold, to be honest. Um, so actually, and that is one. Yeah, that's very, very tough spot. Yeah, he goes just for showdown. The sign, he has, doesn't have enough folds. And yeah, very interesting hand. That's a little bit of the downside. If you like, Ace King is just always a four-bit shove. Ace King offsuit um, because it just doesn't go often into into post flop. But once Justin decides, okay, calling is an option as well, um, then it becomes tricky playing this hands post, or letting your opponent realize more equity. And Shao not going for the shove, but only for the min race. Very very interesting. And David maybe just goes for the call because Chao. Yeah, okay. He says, no, I don't believe you. We have a very polar min race strategy from the small blind. Saved himself some chips, probably. So I have David, Michael, and Shao, and you have Justin, Vladimir, and Matthew. So it's three, three. We're still going. Yeah. So we lost a couple quickly, but still seven handed. I mean, very short for Zhao, but still in the game. We saw a 400k spin up from David Peters, and it is a both players sort of uh, got a little draw. King Queen in the lead has a gut shot. Adamo with the nut flush draw here with King Deuce of clubs and definitely could have the best hand. M Minko, Minko really has a wide range. He's actually to have this to be in this position with this stack. Open has King Queen of Diamonds. It's actually a pretty big premium. And Adamo thinking, I think for sure can believe he has the best hand. It's nice to have a King High nut flush draw too. Chops with some King X. Queen 10 would probably bet on turn, so but chopping some King X is still an option. And now Vladimir thinks about if he wants to attack some 8x or check x and can do both things, can bet or check. Also folding out some flash draws, some open enders is not a is a is a win for King Queen off here. And yeah, no, puts Mike in a very tough spot. How much does it matter that he doesn't have a harder club in his hand with the sizing and targeting of the board um, pairs that he's like pricing out some flush draws potentially? Um, you know, or if he had an ace, what do you what, what would he do here? And how balanced is he? What what do you think is so he gets called? Wow. It's actually on the turn you want to think about um it's good to have a heart because some of Michael's check shafts or check raises are flush draws. Let's say if Michael has queen check in hearts, he will always continue. If he has queen check in diamonds, he probably won't continue. So it's good to have the heart. Um, it's not that good to have the club because some hands like king 10 with the 10 in clubs would fold the turn now. Um, 
ghost check check that's that's good lucky lucky run out so on the flop on the turn you don't want to have a club and you do want to have a heart so that's kind of how you can differentiate which which of the king queen combos you want to barrel a king queen with the queen in hearts which mostly um is mostly barrel and then king queen um with a club and a diamond is just rather wants to check um so that's like little things where you it's it's like you have the same hand but like little attributes in the hand make a little bit of a difference in your opponent's range and it just makes it this little bit better um for it to then become a come a barrel or a check and that's also like how you never super like if you think about it this way then you never super off um um in your execution and Matthew just goes for the five yeah. three of you you just like okay i'm gonna attack your big plant with with my very bottom oh and that's it's a good flop for matthew justin doesn't have any a6 um and now is to think about how high does he want to call down probably cannot fold queen nine offsuit yet um does decide to fold um yeah shows shows how far these players can go in these situations um very polar we've seen it from Shah with queen it offsuit where some would have shaft and shout decided it's not good enough to shaft and just uses it as a min race and matthew covering justin just goes for the five three off open i would think matthew goes for the three bet here um michael probably goes a bit too wide against the chip leader and he wants to attack this one with queen check off not a bad combo um but michael has it this time will be shove and oh probably what do you think does he go for shove or uh back? generally the ace king suited i think you see the the re-raise the ace king off shoving in these spots but i guess adamo maybe maybe he's he would he would get a little bit he would put put a click in just because of how aggressive he is and like i said try to induce because of the way his game is structured i think he would just raise not all in yeah I love it. And it's it's like one of the like your your next guest episode, David, he has that down. Like on final tables, I, I watched quite a bit of his. Um he has those clicks and he does it with bluffs, but also a little bit wider with um value as well. Um very very nice to see. You can um he can probably share about a lot of, of, of his strategy next week. Um and he's always fun to watch. In these scenarios, David is the one uh, who finds the the click back and then has the offshoot a6 or in the in the range and uh, always nice to see and michael i think in his spot i think it's a good click because he can be just forwarding um as a bluff and i wouldn't be surprised if matthew just shoves in ace four suited or a hand like this yeah i'm, I'm fighting a cold here and i'm i was trying to like i said mario please carry as much as you can talk walk us through i'm i'm uh oh hold on hold that thought we got a mystery hand this is uh right. king three or sorry king nine of hearts for david peters in the small blind with a raise from matthew under the gun talk us through this mario tough one i think pre he now has the decision he covers him he can go both ways i wouldn't mind choosing this combo as a cerebral bluff um gets to fold out some better king x he probably doesn't even continue king queen off um and some better a6 uh, and performs decent post flop so i think both options are fine um i would think maybe it's a little bit too wide choosing king nine off king nine suited so um but in general um very good hand selection uh, if you go king 10 suited or king eight suited or king nine suited or ace seven suited it's not that huge of a difference you just have to think about um the opening range and matthew here in this spot um, we've seen earlier he's quite aware out of position that he doesn't want to um cannot continue that wide um against three bets so he looks very studied um which now makes a tough spot um and again on the flop david now can think about um suit wise yes he can see it as a as a c bet but i think king nine in hearts I wouldn't mind just checking this combo and just betting spades and clubs, um, just having differentiation there. I would always check um, 
king 10 um, and betting king 8 king 9 suited with the backdoor straight draw um, can be good he gets some folds of ace check suited not too many um, ace 10 suited maybe um, the ones without a club draw um on the turn it's tricky i would think we want to check here most of the time if we want to bear we want to have the king in diamonds or the king in spades and check king nine in hearts um what's the weakest hand that matthew arrives here is probably ace check in clubs and some pairs some eights through checks um and at this point i think from david is just a check and give up um curious also works pretty well ah mm -hmm. wow wow what it gets the he's giving up and now he's got a massive card and is going to put him into a very good position i guess why he loses the tens and jacks but what are what are your what are your thoughts now it's not that many combos left he does have pocket eights he calls rather fast preflop, so I think he's less likely to have eights. He thinks a little bit more about it with, with that combo. Um, he's very condensed around tens and checks, which could bet a little bit on the turn. Um, he also could just check back a queen. Um, not really many bluffs. Like, he has some flush draws, um, but this also, like, does really does continue king 10 suited preflop in spades. Probably not. King check in spades, probably yes, but probably doesn't bluff river. Um, now it's just a question, what does Matthew do with his ace-10 in clubs, with his ace check in clubs? Wow. Uh, love love this game. This is a great mystery hand. Well done, team in South Korea, man. You guys picked a, a doozy. This, what do you like here, man? This is, this is Mario. This is a tough spot. Yeah. I mean, if, if we arrive in the river now, we get about we need 25 percent plus some icm premium um so i would like to have like 30 percent and you can now start counting the combos of tens checks um eight queen and then king queen suited not the offset ones um and then one combo pocket nines maybe sixes and sets i think sevens and six uh, does call love it I, I couldn't see how he could fold right that as played with the nine on the river it's just too much hand i think but really well done from david peters and tough spot for matthew very tough spot what do you what do you think about matthew's bet as played on the river with the ace jack suited it puts david in a really tough spot um it's hard to find bluffs like really really hard to find bluffs um it's this the buster flash draws i can see ace check just being a check down sometime as well um and now he can just he just thinks about his value combos and then fills them up with a little bit of um a little bit of bluffs as well so in david's spots is he just has a pure bluff catcher it's not easy to find enough uh not not to find enough bluff so i don't mind the bet at all um he could just have ace king and probably gotten the fold or ace check himself um yeah very very tricky spot very hard to analyze. Um, Pretty sick beat too, right? The ace jack suited, he flopped, not flush drawn. You have the best hand. Your opponent gives up on the turn. You decide to check back, which makes sense with that holding. And then the river, you get, you then decide your opponent hits like a what four outer? Is it? So you got king nine. Needs a he needs a non spade king or nine on the river to actually get the check mark. And so. David um, probably made the assumption that the sizing on the river was a little bit too big for tens and checks um probably would have thought it maybe goes one third but not like 60 60 percent i think it was um which maybe discounts some checks and ten, some tens which are a disaster for our king nine um and now seeing the result david figured that out pretty well in in game it was very difficult um great play by david um to, to figure that out yeah, he's got another spot here where he's in position and he has got the best hand. And that was let's see if I'm right. gonna go for it. He does have an eight. I mean seven, eight. There's some let's see if he is gonna go for it here. Wow. 
David is not in the folding mood today. He might sniff this one out too. The eight is real, not really that relevant. Eight seven suited doesn't continue. Block some eights. They would call and gets the fold. And now it's a very interesting scenario. Three short stacks, two chip leaders, and Michael. And now you see Michael folding the king's exo. So he does show awareness that in these situations where he opened way looser before, now into the chip leader, he is aware that he needs to be very tight. And Vladimir having a tough decision. Like he's like six big blinds, king's resuited. Um, Close one, maybe decides to call um, against Justin Openshaft, makes the call, and suits down. Risk, king at three, wow. conclusive flop, 99.34. Going to lock it up on the turn. Good game to Justin Bonomo. Got to look if he's the number one or number two all-time currently. I know they've been... Uh, been back and forth with Brink Kenny. Either way, right? Basically tied for first, your all-time money leader in the live tournament poker earnings. Number two currently, I guess Bryn is uh, just six. I mean, uh, Mario, 62,927,000. he He's got 63 million in live career tournament earnings. Is that, I mean, is that real? That is that is insane. And they go toe-to-toe. Because -to -toe. I, I, I know that like, I, they overtake each other. Every, like Bryn won the... Won the uh, London Invitational, so he overtook Justin again, or Justin fights back, so I'm curious to see where they they take it in the future. Maybe, I, I'm curious to see who's who's the first to, to crack 100 million in live tournament earnings. Br Bryn's actually separated himself a little bit now with 65, <laughs> so got a 2 million lead. It, it was like within a couple hundred thousand and, and teetering back and forth, and Jason Kuhn and fourth, Stephen Chidwick third, 54 million, Daniel Negreanu, 51, Dan Smith, about to cross the 50 mark, literally for oh, one wow. 500K. So you got six guys that are basically a 50 plus. Then you drop off a little Ike Haxton. And then another man, look at David Peters, 43 million, eighth yeah. all time. You guys are watching just the number two and number eight all time money list earners in live tournament earnings. That's not talking about online, what they've done. And then in, and then Michael Adamo as well, who's one of the, the world's best and also one of the top, uh, I don't even know where he, I'm trying to find where he stands. Like he's number 35 with 22 million as well in there. So this is a, this is a treat. This is a masterclass of tournament players in the world here. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Who do you, who's your bet for a hundred million? They're going to hit it, right? They have to, there's $20 million scores <laughs> with Triton now left and right. And the, the one drops. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the one drop will mix it around quite a bit. After that, we might see another leader. Like I think, um, it might get pretty big um, in December this time. So you will have a first prize of like somewhere between 10 and 20 million. And whoever wins that from the the, the guys you just mentioned will take over the first, uh, the number one spot again. So um, Justin and uh, Bryn have to perform there to to, to keep keep the rain on the number one spot. Um, yeah, I, I've, I think, I mean, Jason, Jason Kuhn, Ike Hexton, he plays just everything. He he's he's tough to stop. He's playing so well. Um and playing all the biggest events. So my guess for the number one would be Ike. Um just because he he's there battling every life every life event. Um and then I mean Justin also he's he's playing Britain's playing some, but playing less volume. So that's uh that speaks rather for uh, Ike and Justin, and uh, I'm curious to see who goes goes to 100 million first. Will maybe be another couple of years. Or someone told me new that we we don't know yet. It's, it's just crazy. It actually is crazy. Those numbers are absolutely mental. This is really crazy. And Chao goes for the check call instead of the open shot. Well, Jack five, pretty nice to have the flush draw here. He's got going to have 12 outs, two times versus nines. Mm -hmm. Certainly right not everywhere. folding. Nope. And Adamo going to be bet calling here. And we have close to a flip, slight advantage Adamo.
turn clean big advantage now adamo needs to fade the river you know what representing motown down there and it is a club that is not a face card that would mean a knockout another player goes we are down to five just like that it is going to be a time for a giveaway very soon 50 or 100 dollars going to say going to put it in the chat very soon part first part of that is to hit the thumbs up a lot of you already did that we have 1800 people watching right now 124 of you hit the thumbs up if you like mario if you like the gg millions if you like anything about what's going on today please hit that thumbs up and then be ready for a 50 or 100 dollar giveaway based on if mario's player win or mine that will be a ticket there is also the hands up which is the jackpot you can guess the the winning last hand for today the progressive bet oh hold on a sec ace three ace jack suited we might be down to less as ace jack suited does get out flop though just to oh hello david peters number eight all-time money list that's a favorable turn for him and the river not going to flip flop to the three we are three-handed hold on ladies and gentlemen let's cue the giveaway everyone let's get this let's get focused here because this is happening fast i'm going to add that in and uh, again hit the thumbs up that's the first part of the giveaway second part going to be the keyword we're going to get that next Tweet. Let me get the tweet for you guys. I'm going to do it one more time. I don't want to spam it, but it is my pinned Twitter, Jeff Gross Poker. Mario is the banner. Mario, have you retweeted yet? Are you eligible for giveaways? I mean, don't worry. If you I win, we'll, we'll do it. I my phone, but I will retweet it. And do it have to before the thing ends? It doesn't. Uh -huh. It doesn't. You know, it's just you want, if you want to let your viewers and your fans know that you're alive and, and, and giving commentary and dropping secrets, the poker world, you should do it now. If not, you can do it after and still get the $50 if you hit it. If you win it, I'm going to double down, give another 50 but you are eligible. And here is the link in the chat for my Twitter, $50 cash money. Not not a ticket. That's 50 cash. Uh, link above. What's up, Corey? Good to see you guys. So many familiar faces. Hello, everyone. And again, here comes the keyword. Keyword coming for the $50 or $100 ticket. It's going fast. These guys are aggressive. Minko's playing to win. David Peters is doing his thing. Adamo's not afraid to go for it. Let's get this in. The keyword is going to be, let's see. We're going to do Mario, Bahamas, and then actually, yeah, you got to put your GG Poker username. Insert GG Poker username. So Mario space Bahamas. And then insert your GG Poker username. If you don't have one, gift it to a friend, split it with them, give it to them, take a percentage. But surely you know someone that has a GG Poker eligible username in the world that is in a jurisdiction that allows to play. If you can't, that's unfortunate. Uh, if you're in USA or some other places that don't allow it. But again, that's it. Keyword above <laughs> for 50 or $100. Powers Lou is asking about the link that is again jeff gross poker twitter just go there pin tweet that's the deal here we go let's focus in three giveaways live playing for the title adamo going for a seven eight is it right eight title he's won four i believe there are three two and one maybe it's his seventh title. i'm gonna i'm gonna double check that i'm gonna stat check myself i think three in season one two in season two one so he would be going for his seventh title david peters has won i believe one time one time as well in season three, David Peters is one, and Minko would be a first-time winner. Does have the final? Does have four here. final tables lifetime in this? So this is his fourth final yeah. table today. Oh, that's a big bet for for Michael in this spot. Minko checks back the turn, so he does now would have to find some pocket eights, pocket nines. Five six suited, like some kind of shoulder melee that he doesn't bluff the turn with. Um, so it's actually not that easy to find enough bluffs uh, here. And also going for the big sizing. Um, I I think Michael would find the fold um, because there are just like some flush draws um, that he wouldn't barrel. Some check ten, queen ten. Oh, finds the call. How how much does a seven of spades matter there, if at all? Um, a little bit like um, I'm thinking about what 7x in space maybe not really that many yeah like on the turn you don't want to bet hands that you have to bet fold so you check back some flush draws so like say check 7 in space you cannot bet call it so in these spots you can check it back realize your equity because you don't want to get pushed off um, if out of position check shove so then the 7 becomes relevant if mink on barrels his queen seven and uh check seven is based and it becomes less relevant um he just decides that he doesn't didn't buy it and calls down the king x 
and uh, gets the bad news that uh, Minkun has hit the ten on the river. Michael with the pocket kings against David. Curious to see if he defends now. Um, we've seen him defend it earlier against the cutoff open and against a little bit more polar open from Michael because he does have now he starts to have some shafts, so his opens become a little bit more um, uh, more polarized and defense. And now we get to see Michael maneuvering the short stack three handed. Mingun has played really well. He's uh, made no missteps, executed um, his hands very well. Um, very impressed. And David with this small blind probably goes for a limp. Um, and now for Michael, there's not really that much. Like in the, he can play a lot of very close to GPV. He will not outlast mink on very often and to just if it's down to david and michael he will play pretty close to just for ch for chips and tries to overtake him and get back into the game mm. goes for the limp probably limp shove expecting to get iso raised quite a bit and minkon doesn't doesn't fall for the trap There are some funny comments in the chat. I cannot cannot uh, reread this one, but I didn't see. It. I'm trying. There's a lot. People are trying to win this giveaway. Typing in Mario Space Bahamas and the thing. I didn't. I didn't see it. You can message me on on the messenger on the side. But yeah, this is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The audience is wild today. We got an active one. We got 1,700 watching. Hope Ooh. you guys are coming to the Bahamas to win a bracelet as we see a big flop for Adamo. Queen three suited and Minko at eight million. He's got over half, about half the chips in play, four million and one point three. So sitting nice, but it's not over till it's over. And Adamo looking to kind of crawl back in here. Of course, Ace eight, pretty powerful hand in this spot. Does beat a lot of hands. Queen three, and that card's gonna gonna hook him on a little harder. Yep. I guess Mike, it's tough to fold these bluff catchers. Um he goes thin for value. You know he finds the right bluffs. And I mean ace eight it just is a great combo to call down with. Um I would assume he now goes for seventy-five to ninety percent pot. Um he will have the king five off. The it goes for half pot, a little bit smaller, leaves himself pot behind on the river. King on the river. Maybe now makes it possible for David to fold some of Michael's bluffs on the turn are King X. He probably won't barrel check 10 because he doesn't want to get pushed off the equity, so he would check that back. So it's a little bit more polar. Um, now his bluffs are Queen X, Queen 5, Queen 6, Queen 7. Goes for the shove. And that's the spot where it's just like, ah, oh, you just hate to see it. Um, you just have a pure bluff catcher. A good card is the eight. The ace and hearts is also a very good card. Um, Michael probably won't bear a lot of ace and hearts on the turn. Um, maybe some ace, four and hearts, but probably checks back river because he does have showdown value. So the ace is actually a really good card, doesn't block any bluffs. Um, and now it's the sit like it's 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 close. It's Siri v bluff catcher. Um, does he think he overdoes it? Um, yeah. Now we can see in this spot he has it, but I wouldn't mind if David decides to call Michael down here. Wow. Does call. What what are the considerations when 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 he calls and there's seven thousand seven thirty two? He leaves himself with that little bit of chips. Does it, does it really matter? I mean, is, is, is Peter supposed to raise him in? Is he supposed to just call? Like, what? Well, tell me about that little nuance. Um, I, I honestly think Michael just put in his big blind. He probably just like saw, I don't know how many big blinds it was, like let's say 30, and it just puts in 30 big blinds, and it actually 30 big blinds plus 7,000. So then the software puts in 
the 30 big buys. I think in, in practice, like there's no reason for Michael to not shove in the last 7k because he doesn't really can outlast anybody else. Um, so I think it's just there's not that huge of a difference for David. Yeah, um, I mean, you could you could just put it in, right? That doesn't really change that much. Um, especially with a bluff catcher, like because like with a bluff catcher, if you raise, he only calls better hands. If you, um, he doesn't really have a worse value hand, so I think you you just call it. On the other hand, you could bluff him. Like imagine you just he just have a missed draw and you think okay, Michael is bluffing too much. You just min back raise. Uh, but I don't think that happens. I've I've seen that one time, and when the poker code uh, guys, one of the infamous um, guys, and uh, yeah, bluff raised it back. Now very interesting um, what David will do against this three bet from. Vladimir, he can be, be could be quite a, quite out of line here as well. <laughs> so it's two of my guys against one of your guys with the chip lead. Pretty fair, <laughs> pretty fair spot. I mean, I like I like like my side, but at the same time, it's pretty close. I mean, I have two of the greatest poker players of all time. You have the chip lead advantage, though, so it is it is close. They keep battling. <laughs> yeah, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a battle. And good luck to the audience who's involved again. Last hand, we'll see that what that comes into. Hope you got your hand the guess in for the winning hand. I said nine of spades, nine of diamonds. Mm -hmm. And you made did you did you actually go and click it? Did you get in or no? You just verbalized it or are you in the are you in the jackpot giveaway for Reddit? I'm here. I'm on my laptop, so I don't know. Ah, okay. All right. Well, I just, I, I hope, I mean, shoot, that would be, that would be wild if you had a jackpot. <laughs> well, what can I win? What, what can I win? What is the? It's a, it's a, it's a progressive jackpot. I'm not sure what it's at today, but it goes up every week that someone doesn't hit it. So it's not nothing, you know, it's, it's, it's at least it's some real money and one person's hit it. It's been probably 10 weeks or 12 weeks since someone's hit it. So it's, uh, it's worth a click around. Okay. I, I do that now. And I, I find it on the YouTube stream. Yeah, the, there's a pin link in the YouTube chat. They take it down. I usually had heads up for sure. Maybe they've taken it down already, but um, it might be there. If not, you know, get it next week. King 10, Ace 9, King on the river. Adamo going to jump into a better position now. Um, it's that. We left. We can also throw in some questions from the chat i i've had a hard time reading how like because, because it's quite small but if you have any questions write it out probably in capital letters would be the best um and we can go through them um here in our stream i actually didn't know jeff that uh that it's live the stream i thought it's like like a little bit pre but like that it's live live uh, i didn't know pretty cool yeah it's it's a it's a slight delay but they yeah it's live every week and it is uh it is fun and in the questions though guys do you, if you want to see mario on my podcast type a one in the chat let's see if we're gonna get if we get enough ones i think mario's gonna come on as well we're gonna get this is fun we get to talk we need i want to break down we need the full mario rundown have you done a pod ever have you done a poker podcast um ever? yeah i've done i've done a couple um i've done with fedor one um i've done one with elliot elliot Rowe. and yep, legend. Bo both great mm -hmm. And yeah, I would love to love to do one, Jeff. Um, right. Maybe, we'll do do maybe in... we do it in person. Maybe in Bahamas, yeah. it's hard because poker and a lot going on. But we could. That's yeah. possible. If we don't get it done there, we can do it. We can do it after because that that is hard to schedule. And I'm sure you got your your cold plunge, meditation, workout, your whole routine. So I, you know, I wake up and roll out of bed, FaceTime with my kids, and pray that my knowledge from the millions is enough to to win a tournament but i we'll see if we can make our schedules work we'll we'll figure it out a lot of people want to see mario look at this all ones on the podcast oh. i love that i love it all right we're doing that's a, that's a lot that is a that is a that is definite we are that is booked that, that is, is booked. booked well oh that was my other question game of gold game of yeah. gold you said you like it you, your girlfriend even doesn't really know you know she's in it people are in it it's an amazing show no doubt about a high high production value what what are your thoughts about i i got thrown i got to retweet this thing too about being on game season two, I've, I've talked, you know, I know there's a good possibility it could happen. 
about season yeah. two. Would you want to be on the show? Do you think this would be fun for you? Like, yes, no, maybe? Um, yes. So I put it out there. If Chichi wants me to be on the second season, I'll be I'll be down. I, 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 I love the format. I love the, the bantering behind the scenes. Um, I love the... I mean, I talked a little bit with Fader, so there will be fun things happening. So a little spoiler, that it will be uh, fun things happening um, down the road. I love the format. So if uh, Chichi fix, uh, I'm I'm a suitable guest, then I would be down for season two. All right. Well, there you, you heard it. That would be good. Anyone in the chat, let's do one more question for you guys, because you've been excellent. This has been a triple plus performance from the chat today. Who has seen Game of Gold? Who has seen it and enjoyed it? You got you to seen it and enjoyed it. Type a Y in the chat for yes. Why? If you've seen Game of Gold and you're and you're digging it, I, I I can't imagine someone. It might be the same. If you've seen it, you enjoy it. I would imagine because I don't know one person who's like, yeah, I don't like it. I don't know. People people love it. So let's see the the whys in the chat for yes. I I, I got to catch up. I'm actually behind. I, I can't wait to see the last few uh, episodes here that I've missed. I've I've seen, there's I think eight right. Eight have been released or something like uh, I've seen four. Yesterday I watched the eighth one. My favorite character is Jungle Man. Like I I this guy is such a legend. Like he, him just like being there and sleeping, it's just like it's strong. He's yeah, I've had him on my podcast three times, and I'm he's a good friend of mine. He is he is uh, he is what po I mean, he really is special. He is super super he's so special. special. Like he 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 doesn't want to be funny, but he's just is funny in like the way he carries himself, and the way how honest he is about like how he, it's just it's, it's so good. It's 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 so fucking funny. He's great. He's as good as it gets. I actually played, you know, I played a similar thing with him. Have you ever seen the Premier League? Did you ever watch any of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was on Wait, the last season of that, season seven, Premier League, with Jungle Man, Phil Locke, Brian Rass, yeah. Jason Kuhn was on there. I'm trying to think who else, if anyone else from the Game of Gold was there. But that was amazingly fun and similar, right? Because you're playing sit and goes and like, yeah, the, the, oh, Scott Seaver and Jungle Man got into it so many times. It was, it was so funny. Like, and again, he's not trying to do whatever, but Seaver just was like life tilted by Jungle <laughs> and how he was doing stuff. And it was, it was epic, man. That was like similar, the points, the structure, that's great TV. That was like an amazing cast. Dan Coleman, that was his coming out party. Sorrel Mizzy on there who uh, ended up winning. I got second, um, Dan Coleman got third and that was like his start They actually have an interesting story about Dan Coleman. This is a great, interesting hand here though. It's just see queen five and four, five, four, five picks up the open ended and it is going to be an interesting spot. Does David Peters get a little saucy here? Yeah. It wouldn't work. It could go both ways on the flop check raise or check call from David. Um, and then on the turn, it's just dicey. You don't really want to call and fold. You don't want to raise um if it's five four and diamonds he will probably just check shaft um so he decides to fold back to your story about dan coleman jeff yeah so i i can't remember if it was it was either it was either phil helmuth or daniel Legrandu. i it doesn't matter really there was one person that pulled out last minute it was in montreal playground poker shout out to those boys the amazing amazing place my favorite place in the world to play poker and it was like Someone was like, Who, we need us. We need a 12th. Like we're starting. They, there was like a last minute withdrawal within a day or two, I think, or three days, like very close to the start time. Like who can we add to the premier league that's available that wants to play that's around preferably like in Montreal area. And then I think it was Mizzy. Someone was like, Oh, Dan Coleman, like he lives here. He'd be good. He's like the best. He was Mr. Green online, right? The number one sit and go heads up player in the world. He was printing. Like he just knew what he was printing. Every time he played, he was making X dollars and he would just sit and grind all day long. He's probably like 20 yeah. years old, 21 or whatever. Um, so then his name gets thrown in the hat. He decides, okay, I'll come. But if you go look at his hen and mob, like basically never had played live or very little. And he then like comes and, I, I, I got to pull up the Henna Mob and check Dan Coleman exactly on, on the run. But this was basically his first introduction to high stakes live tournaments. And again, you get you get points, right? 2,000 a point. So you're kind of hedged. It's 125K buy-in, but it's really less. The top four get a buy to the final table. Five through eight play heads up for the five, eight, six, seven. And then the two winners from the heads up go to the final table. And you get points, right? So like the, the payouts are actually very tight because the winner gets you know it, it, it gets a little bit tighter even if you lose or get eighth you get some points and you get like money back but 
Anyway, he comes in. He was big chip leader, three-handed. Shoves like fives all in. Mizzy had kings, blah, blah, blah. Dan gets third. I get ends up getting heads up with Mizzy, and I get second. And then Dan bursts in. This was his introduction. Then he just went on this like live, played everything. Won the one drop, one million for like whatever. Won this, won that. Won every tournament in sight and had one of the best heaters ever. So that was like ran. I don't know. Maybe he's just sitting online playing poker online still in his PJs. But instead, comes, plays, cashes, has a great time, and then never look back. So that was that's your Dan Coleman story. Uh, 2013, I believe, November. So, I mean, you gotta show up to these events. Like, you can only win the one drop if you if you played. You gotta get out there. And maybe if you wouldn't have called in for a Premier League, you wouldn't have gotten a taste of life high stakes and wouldn't have won the events afterwards. So, um, I think that's a really important part to just go out there and uh, just go for it. Yeah. So, I mean, he did have a couple. He did, he he had never played. Like, yeah, I'm just looking at his hand and mob. He had never played above a 10K. So he had played, he had like eight or maybe like 10 caches or something on his hand and mob, sporadically played a few World Series or a 10, you know, a few tournaments. But then this was like the 125K buy-in. And then, and then shortly after April, of like five months later, he won the uh, 100K in Monaco. And then like he, he won the, in June that year, the 1 million, one drop for 15 million. And, and then if you go look, it was just a string of seven figure caches for like several years, so. Yeah. Anyway, back to the, to the side stories. Let's take a look here as we are still three handed and David Peters fighting for his re emergence to the re resurgence to the tournament as he does have a pair and now a flush that is good. And Adamo, no, nothing viable there to. Uh... That's big for the 10 of hearts. Mm hmm. Now it's flipped. Vladimir is first, Michael Cleal in second, and David is clear short stack. Um, yeah, now Michael probably tries to get David Peters out as quick as possible because he's he, he cannot do much. Like even if you play aggressive, you kind of has to respect the situation where the chip leader just has the advantage, and you need to be a little bit, a um, little bit more passive. And Vladimir can just take this. I mean, for him, it's an amazing situation in position to second in chips um, with a clear short stacks, just perfect in three handed situations. <laughs> I, I have the chat open, and there is a 2009 WSUP. Uh, main event episode with Lex Feldhaus in the, in the below. That was some that was some legendary legendary poker content back then. He was a wild man back then. <laughs> yeah, got kids now and and uh doing his thing. I mean they're they're really like it's amazing to see where poker content is these days. There's so much stuff going on. There's there's YouTube, there's there's Twitch, there's different streaming yeah. platforms there's podcasts there's commentary there's so many cool things that have happened in poker and so and it's great to see the game growing expanding new people taking taking the game and as you said even like your girl you know your fiance is watching a show doesn't necessarily understand everything but it's like enjoys it and this, i mean the fact they made this like reality type show with poker it's fascinating it's amazing they pulled it off and you like i like to see like them having success like the, also the live cash game um guys like brad owen uh, andrew nimi um and they now taking over a casino in uh, texas that's that's not some random corporation but like the poker players Doug and these guys they uh it, i love to see it it's uh it's it just made it possible because they made a build a community and uh made some great content big flop here with Michael. Ooh, this this is this has got the makings of a, a big pop for sure one and two although david peters Going to hold maybe them to get two out of line as the ICM, you know, Madamo trying to think what he's going to do here. Million in the pot. That's what David Peters has in the stack. Three-handed pay jumps lower left of your screen. Big jump here. No deal making available as always in the, the GG million. No deals, guys. Play no for deal. all. What are your thoughts on deals? Do you do them? Depends. Never. Sometimes. Maybe. I don't mind them. I think in a lot of situations, it's uh, financially just smart because it's rare situations. Um, even yes, you have an edge. Um, if you play heads up against someone that you think you're better, you maybe win like 52, 53. If it's very good, 55% of the time. Um, 
and it's just a lot of variance. And I, I generally, I put it for myself in that way, where if this would be a rake free sit and go and the buy-in would be the heads up we play for, or half of the heads up we play for, would I play it? And if the answer is no, I'm fine with making a deal. Um, if the answer is yes, then I, I play it out. And that's generally how um, I approach the situations. Um, but I'm also there a little bit more conservative and um, don't mind um, giving up a little bit of EV to reduce um, the variance there. Because like in, as MDT players, we are playing so much uh, and having so much variance already. Yeah. Michael okay. and Riverbed just getting to fold out some busted flush draws, maybe some 10, nine, maybe some, f yeah, 10, nine and busted flush draws. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, Minko's got himself an amazing situation right now, but again, some very accomplished players here and not, not going to be a cakewalk by any means. What, what percent of the time do you think Minko wins with this, this, these stacks and the situation even right now? So it's hard to say, but you know, you've seen uh, a lot of final tables. Yeah. He probably, he has now 66% of the chips. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. So I would say he probably wins around 70% of the, maybe 68 to 70. Like he's the chip leader. He will have the highest BB per 100 win rate, which will make him the favorite to win the most chips. Um, even though Michael and David Peters arguably could be um, stronger players, even though Minko, Minko has played very well. Uh, so, but um, just given the situation, if he's a very good player, then he will um, outperform the chips currently and um so i would assume he wins somewhere around 65 to 70 percent of the time um yeah and you, yeah you can deduct the edge like if you say okay michael is so much better than heads up then then the big band per 100 win rate plays against that um against minko but uh he has played so well that i the edges if there is an edge it will be very small flopping the set Ui. Potentially, like in this spot, you probably want to ra raise check five in diamonds and not nine, nine five of diamonds because you just have three more outs against the 10 top pair. But I can see Michael just, okay, he just gives it up. Curious to see how he would perceive what he would build around. He probably raises like five, four, six, five, four, six, and then overcard plus back to flush to the 10. Um, a good combos here. But in general, you want to be quite careful because you cannot go that wide for value. So you want to be bluffing uh, a bit less. And this could be it, Jeff, flipping for all of it. Yeah, I think flipping I'm for the opportunity for all of it. This is uh, definitely one that is could take us to heads up. It also could readjust the alignment of the podium, the final three, getting the lion's share of the money today, big names. And Adamo doing a, you know, he's he's weighing his options here. He's not in love with it. He has to call. Chess clock also. Look at that. 22 seconds apiece there. Both oh, players God. exercising a lot of thinking during their 15-minute chess clock as it is a flip. Ace eight to threes and an ace arrives. Adamo's got Peters on defense and a little extra delay, a little, little loading. Everyone, the two great players that win, run well, play well. Something's got to give. Adamo going to get the hold there on the flop, I should say, to get there. Slightly behind threes as a flip. There's a look at 173 adding to the number eight all-time money list earner, David Peters. Adamo on the board for 222, at least going to have a $62,000 heads-up match. A lot of respect between these players. Got to imagine they know each other well and are familiar. And, and uh, Minko got a, got a little lead, but how big a lead now? How big of a lead is this? It's, it's, it's still fairly tight. What, two to one? Exactly two to one lead? I would assume Michael has a bit of an edge in heads up, um, because just his play. Maybe Minko had, doesn't have, hasn't had that many uh, final like heads up on on that big of a stage. He could have studied a lot. Of, I don't know, um, but definitely Michael is tough to play heads up in this short stack scenario. He will put a lot of heat on him. Um, I would assume Michael's trying um, to to redline and win the non shot on pots a lot, um, and get his win right there. 
Um, so now it's up for grabs. I love the animation, the, the, all the money on the table, the dollar bills. Looks like Min Minko is the, the guy with the, the, the guys that is backed by, mon by money and Mike was trying to go for it. Ooh, that wow. could be it. Could be over wow. in one hand. Wow. And he's got the spade too in his hand, you know, just a little extra. Maybe he could have some draws. He's got the, got the thing. And, and is he going to raise here with this bet wet of a board in this situation and, and go, or do you just call, close your eyes? I think you just, in this, in this spot, you just want, like Michael will have very polarized range. He probably just wants to have, um, to, 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 to call and let Michael bluff, uh, a river. Um, and now it's up to Michael. How thin does he want to go? Does he want to go with the 10 8? Is it strong enough? Does he bet another sizing than all in? Um, curious to see. Shafts wow. it, snapped wow. off, and. Wow, oh. that's it. Who wins it? G. Quick heads up match. A magical performance from Minko, who is going to take it down. Vladimir there, rocking the. Uh, rocking the, 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 the Mexican flag in absolute epic performance. Really impressed with how he played. Give me some takeaways for today on what you saw. Who, who stood out for you? Uh, Minko has played uh, very well, found the right spots, has played throughout from nine left to uh, heads up, made the right decisions. Uh, well deserved winner. Um, we had a stacked final table. Um, eight nine of the greatest players in the world um great to see and minko uh play outstandingly well and well deserved the uh, first time champion i think yeah that is uh that is i mean literally i can't say uh, every time it feels like it's something new special unique but today again some of the world-class players in the world we got to see them we got to see them bluff we got to see them call we got to see them show us icm we got to see all the things you love in poker and mario i appreciate the time again one of the hottest players in the world right now winning live winning online won the gg millions about five weeks ago just won a triton event at the most recent stop for seven figures and will be in the bahamas for the wsop in paradise and the you said this weekend right you'll be there very soon and i'll be i'll be joining you and and, and firing and we'll have some fun and uh a dinner who won it was my guy right it's a hundred dollars i gotta choose the winner is that right uh Yes, you choose the dinner spot. All right, thank well, you. Pete, I'm gonna. I, I bet I'm very familiar with the Atlantis. Went there for about ten years every year for two well, weeks. So I, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go off my, off property. I think to Great Cliffs. We're gonna go to a nice one. Maybe be some nice wine. Uh, my wife. We get. I don't. We didn't say plus ones, but if your fiance is there, you know she's we welcome to join. That. We can bring our plus ones have a very nice dinner and i want to say congrats to peter saveski who did win the 100 dollars giveaway gg ticket i will get your your gg username that will be credited and mario follow him on socials safe travels my friend i will see you in bahamas and uh hopefully maybe we'll be on a future game of gold together that could be fun one day it's not out oh, of the question that would yes. be a great great time all right thanks everyone we'll see you next week with david yan your current gg million ranking leader next week same time same place appreciate everyone just